It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! Hi guys, this is Time Again, Step the Ring with the greatest faction in podcast history. Just regressing the JFW podcast, hosted by Travis D. And guys, I'm going at this alone today because I'm sitting down with one of the greatest wrestlers in the Midwest. Um, he's a veteran of, geez, what's it got to be 30 years now? Am I getting that number right? It's got to be 30 years. <laughs> Post 90s, late 90s or something like that? Yes, sir. Mid. Right? Right, so mid, we'll say 25 years. We'll go 25 years. Back when I was in kindergarten, that's when uh, this guy really, uh, really brought it. Brought. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. There's gonna be a couple old jokes in here, but I gotta do it because that's who we are. You gotta throw out a few jabs. I understand. Well, I gotta, well, yeah, I have to because we're not we're not near each other, so I could do that. <laughs> but guys, uh, we've had an opportunity over the last couple months to kind of see uh, some altercations between POW Entertainment, Southland Championship Wrestling. And uh, because of Steve over at the Power Hour taking time off his busy schedule to allow POW Entertainment wrestlers onto his show, uh, we at JFW figured, you know, maybe it'd be best uh, for entertainment purposes to get maybe Southland Championship Wrestling on our podcast. And what better way to do that than the leader of Southland Championship Wrestling, the guy at the top of the mountain of Southland Championship Wrestling to come on and give his side of the story. Um, obviously, Hunter Payne, uh, we we go we go back a long ways. Well, I think we know each other for a long time, uh, but at least uh, worked together for about five years now. Um, so there's been times where we really didn't like each other. We grew to like each other. I'm like I'm like that boil you just can't seem to get away. I'm like herpes. <laughs> I keep popping up. Good herpes, if you will. <laughs> so. Um, I want to take I want to take this opportunity to kind of get your side of the story and get your explanation on a lot of things that's been happening between Southland Championship Wrestling and POW. Uh, I want to dive into as much as we can. I want to give uh, the listeners as much information as they can about this so they can have an impartial understanding of it rather than just what they keep hearing from Scott Spade or POW Tag Team Champions and stuff. POW wrestlers that, again, Steve over the Power Hour, Seems to bring up as well as C Red's perspective of how everything's going down. Um, so the very first thing I want to get off, uh, get out, get out there and get it on the table, is there's a lot of speculation on the beginning of this whole feud, this whole battle. Uh, a lot of people think it has to do with the initial attack on C Red, the attack on Ivan, you guys showing up at POW um, in like a gang style kind of thing, but. From your perspective, from your point of view, how did this issue with Powell begin? The issue with Powell began, uh, like you said, with Scott Spade sending one of my own, uh, Ivan Manson, to the hospital in an ambulance. And do I blame Scott for that? No. I blame the owner of Powell, which is Jimmy Blaze. Sooner or later, I'm going to get my hands on Jimmy, but that's in due time. Yeah, um, and I want to talk a little bit about what happened this past show uh, where you and Blaze were actually in the same building. Uh, But even before that, for those of you who don't remember, uh, a few months back, uh, Scott Spade and Ivan Mance were supposed to have, uh, I think it was a chain match. That never really got... Yeah, that never really got kicked off because uh, Scott Spade took it upon himself to attack Ivan from behind with help of Tiny, to the point where uh, Ivan had to be carted out of the ring, which um, I've never seen in my in my whole time being in independent wrestling, watching shows, somebody who's been beat to the point where they actually be carted out, let alone Ivan Manson, you know, uh, a guy right. who pride himself on uh, those death matches, those hardcore matches, putting his body through hell, <clears throat> that's to be carted out by Scott Spade. Um and yeah, there is a history between you, between uh, Ivan, uh, Dane back, Windy City, Vanguard. I believe you guys also wrestled together in. Sure. 
Um, so, so real, so realistically, the, the, the POW situation kind of started out with kind of a, a personal thing. Like it wasn't a business decision; it was a personal decision. Uh, correct. You check one of mine. You know, as a man, you got to defend your own. Yeah. Um, whether he was by my side or not, I felt I had to do what I had to do. So, yeah, uh, that's what I went down and uh, <clears throat> kind of took over one of their shows in in uh, Wooddale or Willowbrook. I don't know where the hell they were, but whatever. Yeah. I found my way. I found my way there accidentally. So I'm like, oh, right. what the hell? Right. Well, and there's one thing I realized uh, watching Southland Championship Wrestling over the past five years. When you guys decide to do something, you do it in like the biggest impact possible. So, um, like understanding that it wasn't just going after Scott Spade, but going after Pow as a whole. Because I mean, we we've seen we've seen how uh, certain companies will go against other companies. Uh, we know it'll never just be uh, one person against one person. So the fact that Southland Championship Wrestling uh, unified, which was weird too, because there was a lot of people that uh, united together in that effort that realistically don't really get along with each other. But there's something right. about Southland Championship Wrestling that when you attack the company, regardless of who is being attacked, the company will end up coming together. Uh, we've we've seen uh, the likes of El Dorado and VJ Price in the ring together. We've seen you guys stand together to take on Pow against Evil Gains and Evil, a team that uh, you guys have had an issue with uh, for quite some time. You know, especially right. in the tag team championship uh, kind of a category situation. But there's something about Southland Championship Wrestling that um, it's not even just the fan base, but it's the wrestlers that you know you guys have a common understanding. That even though you may not like each other when you step in that ring, your company comes first. It's a company over everything. And I think that's kind of a cool concept that not many companies really get. No, I agree. Uh, just for the simple fact that I'm in that same ring defending Southland with Hudson and Xavier in that same ring should speak volumes. You know, El Dorado and VJ Price, after they just beat the hell out of each other, are in there standing shoulder to shoulder defending Southland. So, um, I'm glad you could see the good in what's happening, mm -hmm. but other people can't seem to see that. You know, other people think I'm running and hiding. I've been at the forefront since the fucking beginning. Yeah, and I I never really understood the whole concept of people believing that Hunter Payne is hiding. I mean, every attack that's happened to Pow, you have been right there. Uh, every time Pow has come into SCW, you have been right there. Uh, anything mentioned on Facebook, social media, uh, you've been there to give a response to it. Uh, these Travis, you, you know, know me for a long time. I don't hide from nobody, man. You, uh, bigger, badder, stronger, tougher, it don't matter. I'll, I'll take an ass whooping and come back, or I'll kick someone's ass and make sure they don't come back. So well, that's true. You know, I mean, whatever. I, I ain't afraid of shit, Travis. You know that. Well, the thing is, like, you're not really built for hiding. Like, uh, I mean, you know, you're a grandfather now. I assume if your child, if your grandchild uh, ever wanted to play hide and seek, you're not going to really hide, be able to hide behind anything unless it's like another building or a structure. <laughs> you're a big dude, man. Uh, but that's the thing that I, I didn't quite understand. And I've had conversations with Steve, and he he has this whole big theory on the fact that um, he's given uh, he's given like his blood, his sweat, his tears to SCW. Yes. Without, yeah, which. Give credit where credit's due. He's taken several beatings. Some of those that he kind of brought upon himself. Agreed. I go back. I go back to high voltage. The whole reason uh, Powell showed up at high voltage because he invited them from the very beginning. Still on him to this day. I will blame him no matter what. I told him that when I was a guest on his show. His fault. <laughs> um, and yeah, he got beat down by Jimmy Blaze. It's weird because you can see him having conversations with Jimmy Blaze on Facebook. Uh, amicable, respectful. Weird concept how some guy beat him down and he could have a conversation with him. What do they call that? Like Stockholm syndrome or some shit? Exactly. That's exactly yeah, what, that's what it seems to be. That. Right? Yeah. And yet you give this man a platform to do what he does best, commentating, announcing. You give him a home to go to. And he's the best at it in the Indies. I, there's no doubt in my mind, bro. Right. He's, he's really fucking good at it. Right. I hate to admit it, but I have to agree with you. He is very good at what he does. It's just a shame that he has to sit there and forget the guy who gave him an opportunity to come to Southland Championship Wrestling and sit there 
and and call you garbage, call you an asshole for leaving him, leaving him high and dry at uh at the brewery, and uh, to kind of clear up anything like that, uh, Steve went out on his own at the request of Terry Allen to relink to to get the title back from Scott Spade uh, at Steam Hollow Rock and Wrestling a couple weeks ago. He was out there alone. He got attacked by uh, Scott Spade's manager, uh, Miss Misery, I believe her name was Mistress Misery. Mistress yeah. Misery, and he was left alone. No one from the no one from the back came out. So to kind of clear up that situation. His accusations was nobody gave a damn. Could you kind of clarify what happened there? Why no one came out? Why he was left on his own? It's simple. He was he was out there to get the title from Scott Spade. He ran his mouth a lot leading up to that. Um, Terry Allen, who was the president, did not want anybody out there. Um, Terry and I come from the same school, and that school is simple. It's the school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you want to run your mouth and you want to trash people, that's okay. But know that in war, sometimes you'll be caught alone. And when you're caught alone, you better be able to back it up. So maybe tough love. I don't know. But I can can see tough love that. See, that makes sense to me. To to Steve's eyes, it was uh, Steve. I think it's betrayal. Yeah, well, he has this weird concept of he can say and do what he wants because he's always going to have backup. Not and always I think, Yeah, and I think that's what got ingrained <laughs> in his mind. And he can sit here and say that, you know, well, maybe January will be my last show or, you know, maybe I'll finish up February and call it over. But instead of going to somebody and talking to them saying, hey, listen, what the hell? Why was I left like this? What's going on? He took it upon himself to go into social media. Saying that he's been betrayed, he's been backstabbed, you know, maybe no. he's on his own. Let me tell you this. What what I have in store for Powell, why on God's green earth would I tell Steve when all he will probably do is turn around and tell Red yeah. who I can't stand. Right? Yep. And then everybody knows what's going on from there. They need to know when they need to know. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Well, you to, know, just know this, just know that I'm Southland through and through. Mm-hmm. I have everyone's back on that fucking roster and no one needs to worry about anything. Will they take a whooping here and there? Yep. I mean, hell, I almost took one of my own guys out. Um, you did. So, <laughs> you well, know, all love and war, man, but yeah. Whatever. And I, <laughs> Again, bro, C Red needs to grow a set too. He needs to get over that shit. Yeah. Well, let's talk about C Red for a minute because that was something that uh kind of came out of left field and no one was expecting. C Red came in to manage Elite Payne, the current uh SCW tag team champions at the time. Now, there was always a weird speculation from my perspective on how C Red saw Elite Payne. Always looking at Anthony as like the weak link, not showing up and everything. As a manager, I never agreed. I you know, really agreed with doing that, right? I'm thinking the same thing. I was about ready to cough myself, and I'm trying to hold it in to be professional. <clears throat> but I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so C-Red comes in manages Elite Payne, and now he, he attacked you from behind, costing you the opportunity to win those titles back, and he blames you for all of this. Of course. Like, it's, what, the easiest, it's the easiest thing to do, right? Yeah. Point the finger. You know, Terry yes. Allen. Terry Allen has a tendency of coming out in my matches and calling out Windy City. Mm-hmm. Right? Fuck Windy City. That's what I say. All right. Yes, I came from there. Yeah. Yes, if it wasn't for Windy City, I probably would not be here. Yes, Windy City made me who I am today. But Windy City's fucking dead. Right? And they yeah. talk about this. They talk about this Windy City brother, brotherhood. Would Red have done that if there was such thing as a Windy City Brotherhood? That's, just and ask, that's I'm just asking for a friend. Yeah. That's well, exactly it, it, what I dealt with in my 15 years in Windy City. Mm-hmm. So there you there you go. Yeah, and it, and I, I kind of agree with you on the aspect of like it seems like while well, Terry, even before becoming SCW president, and again, I, I want to try to watch what I say because I don't want to cost me my GM position. 
through Terry. I still don't even know if Terry could fire me or not. That's the thing I'm trying, like, really trying to figure out. This dude could fire me. But I figured after everything I've said and I haven't got fired yet, maybe not. But speculative, even before Terry became SCW president, there was always something kind of shady about the dude I never understood. Now, I don't know a lot about Terry's past. He is a um, mysterious dude, bro. He, he he marches to the beat of his own drum. I ain't going to lie. No right, one can he, figure him out, and I think, honestly, that's how he likes it. Keep right. people on their toes, to be honest with you. So I, I know I don't trust him. It, so. it, we, that, and that's the thing, too. Is like, you know, when I was sitting there doing commentating with uh, Steve, <clears throat> the night that C Red attacked you and caused you your top title, um, you know, he just kept saying, like, you know, you got to watch what you say because you may end up going missing and stuff like that, acting like Terry's going to do something to me. And realistically, I don't think he will. I think Terry's at the point of his career where he's looking to make more of a name for himself through – like an appearance, not so much action. Um, yes, he was in the tag team title match that gave him the SCW presidency. Uh, all well and good. Congrats to him for that. He really hasn't shown himself that much since then, maybe a couple shows here and there. But when he does show up, it always seems to be something sketchy that just doesn't make sense. Uh, perfect example, like I said, he showed up when C-Red attacked you. Um, he wasn't there to to get the belt his own himself. He assigned it to a non wrestler, a commentator. So kind of like putting somebody in that position that shouldn't have been. Uh, but even from this last show, this Arctic, uh, Arctic Takeover, you know, he had an opportunity to allow Hunter Payne, the Southland ass kicker, the guy, to tear apart Jim Jimmy Blaze and Pow, and, and he, he stood in, in the way to stop it. He stood, yeah, he stood in the way the entire time. Um, leading up to Arctic Takeover, uh, there was a one-on-one -on -one match between you and James Creed at Rock and Wrestling a couple uh, weeks ago at Steam Hollow. Uh, before we get to the ending of that match, because I'm definitely gonna need some quite some understanding on what, what was going through your mind. How did it feel to step in the ring with James Creed? You you, you trained the guy at the wrestling school. You guys have a history that spans over at least the last four or five years. So how did it feel, first off, to get in the ring with James Creed? First of all, you should be asking James Creed how it felt to get in the ring with me. I feel fine. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, the kid's a hell of an athlete, as you've seen. Um, yeah. I had to lace one hell of a whooping on him just so he wouldn't run around the ring, because if I had to chase that boy the whole match, I'd be done for. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. <laughs> Oh, you know yeah. he's he's got he's got a lot of guts. He's got a lot of grit, man. He's got a lot of fight in him, dude. He's mm -hmm. no, he's actually a lot tougher than I thought. And and I train with him two three times a week every week. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, he actually has a lot more inside than yeah. I thought he ever had. Gotcha. Now uh, let's go to the ending of the match. You uh, you took a voluntarily count out to give him the win. Uh, I did. A lot of people don't understand why you did that. I at first thought maybe you did it because you didn't want to kill the kid. And you're like, this. He, like, in my mind, Creed wouldn't have given up. Like, you would have had to put him down in order to win the match. And I don't think you really wanted to do that. I don't know if it was like a, a father thing, a father instinct inside you for the kid or what. But I just want to get your point of view, your perspective on why did you make that decision. A um, couple reasons, Travis. Yeah. Um, First and foremost, I told you earlier that under no circumstance, I have the guys in the back, in the back, I have their back. The guys yeah. in Southland, I have their back. Um, when I was in the ring with Creed and that match was going and going, I think we went 20, 25 minutes. And, you know, a good portion of that was him taking one hell of a whooping. Uh, and he kept coming back and he kept coming back and he kept coming back. And during the course of that match, he just kept earning and earning a lot more of my respect. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so after I hit him with the Alabama slam and he got his foot under the rope to break the count, I was like, God damn, like people take that bump and they just, they're just like, pin me. It's mm -hmm. over. Right. Cause it's a hell of a bump, man. Oh yeah. You know? So when he did that, it just clicked in my head. Like, not only to show Creed, but to show the guys in the back. A true leader will give up things for his troops. Mm -hmm. So 
I felt how I mean he's not a true heavyweight. No. So I figured regardless if he's a heavyweight or not, he's got a chance to go for this heavyweight title. So I'm gonna give it to him. He earned it. He deserved it in my book. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had no problem giving him that shot. Because who knows when he'll get another shot at the heavyweight title. You know what I mean? He deserves yeah. it. For me, for me, Travis, over the past 26 plus years, it's not about titles. Scott Spade can have all the fucking titles he wants. I don't care. Right? Yeah. Southland title is coming back home. If I have to go for it, it's coming back home. But um, to me right now, it's just about Jimmy Blaze. Jimmy Blaze yeah. and, and oh, termination, man. Just gonna fucking get just just rid rid, rid the wrestling world of them. Of them period. Gotcha. Now, th this whole thing, uh, as we talked about earlier, is stemmed from what Scott Spade did to Ivan Manson. How did how did the anger roll over from Scott Spade to Blaze? Is it just Blaze, because of power Blaze, itself? Or? Blaze is the puppet master over there. It's simple. Gotcha. And that company, I I know Jimmy, mm -hmm. and I know Scott. And I know Ruff, and I know all the boys over there, being, from being up and down the road over the past 20 plus years. Nothing happens with Pow unless Jimmy has gives them the approval. Period. Jimmy is Pow. Nothing happens unless he puts his stamp of approval on it. Gotcha. So Scott, being the good little soldier he is, did what he was told. And Ivan will get him. If, if he already hasn't, I think Ivan already had his rematch with him and, and, and took him took him out to the woodshed, you know. Um, but he'll get his due. I, Ivan will get his hands on him again. And I will eventually get my hands on Jimmy. I ain't worried about it. I, I, I'm a very patient man, Travis. It's hey, just the longer, I, the longer I wait, the more pissed off and violent I'm going to become, so. Well, unfortunately, there's going to, have to be a little longer wait. Uh, I think solely because of Terry's uh, interference last week. Um, was there any talk with Terry after the show uh, finished up? I'm wondering, like, why he got in the way of you and Blaze finally have your interaction? Cause no talk. But let me give you a, a couple little tidbits about Terry. Yeah. Terry comes out and claims to be Windy City all the time. Correct. Yes. To all your listeners out there, and to all the boys in the back, do you know Terry spent more years with Powell than he did Windy City? I didn't know that. Right? Watch Terry. Watch Terry's little promos that he puts out. You know his little announcements. Seems like he's working for Powell, not Southland. You know he's all chummy chummy with Jimmy. He uh, uh, praises Scott for breaking the rules and winning how he did. He's okay with it. I mean, whatever. You know, yeah. if I got a if I got a battle if I got to fight a battle with him too, I'll, I'm very capable. Yeah, I got big shoulders, so I, I can <laughs> handle it all. I'm fine. Yeah, it it just it seems like it seems weird how uh, as we were rolling in to the end of 2021, a lot of things were kind of changing and developing uh we saw we saw the victory that terry allen took to become scw president we saw the debut of turtle as a new referee for scw we saw steve show up as a new commentator slash ring announcer <clears throat> and it seems like as as soon as all these things start happening the ivan spade thing happened pow is now becoming more involved in the southland championship wrestling than ever before um and then it's it's like you get Terry who appoints Turtle as the referee for the main event match instead of the senior official, out. right? And look how that worked out, right? And everyone's talking about you know the shoulder being up. You see now Steve praising Turtle for his decision. You see Terry respecting Turtle for his decision. Um, it just doesn't sit right with me seeing certain people coming in the Southland Championship Wrestling. That it, it just it all seems too convenient how they're all here now and things are kind of developing the way they are. Uh what's the one common denominator after all that shit started happening? Yeah. Terry Allen. Mm -hmm. None of it started none of it happened until Terry came around. <coughs> you know, yeah. I dumb. I I I can see it. 
But with him being the president, there's not a damn thing I can do about it. Yeah. It, it, not, not until I find a way to get him out of office. Yeah, it, it's it's weird, you know. Like everyone was expecting the best out of him because, you know, we see we saw a lot of things with Keist. We saw a lot of things with Sentinel. Everyone thought that this was the moment of change. That this is where everything was going to get better. Um, and it could have been if I just woke up my presidency, like I thought I should have deserved. But ah, whatever. I guess I just wasn't quite there yet. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, like I when I sit there and I talk to everybody. They all say, like, oh, Terry's going to be great. Terry's going to be good for the company. And then he shows up. And that's where the problem is. It's his first day that he arrives as SCW president where everything changes. The The night he shows up <clears throat> is when C-Red turns on you. It's where he's berating the referees in the ring, where he questions everything. And he's saying how he wants to do these different things for SCW. Day one. It just seemed very off-putting the way he kind change of good, presented himself. Travis, right? Change is good. People are afraid of change. Yeah. But what kind of change is he talking, really? That's that's what I have, you know, yet to, to really find out or figure out, so mm-hmm. to speak, in my mind. Yeah, it's it, – it, that's the thing, too. It's like there's no clear answer to it. So he said he's kind of a mystery. Like he For it, sure. It, for sure, and he like he, dude. I've known him. I've known him since I stepped foot in his business day one. He's always been like that, always. Yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, fin- so finishing up the uh, show from uh, last week, uh, Creed and Spade had their singles match. Uh, it looks like it was a double pin, and Spade had his shoulder up. Uh, at least that's what Turtle says. No one really saw it until the very end when the decision was made. Didn't seem like Terry fought it or disputed it in any way. Oh, but he straight up took Turtle's decision and ran with it. He was completely okay with it. Right. In my mind, you restart the match and let it finish out squarely. I would be okay with that. Right. Because, you know, See? if that happens, Scott loses. Yeah. See, President Travesty knows how to do shit. <laughs> but, yeah, no. hey, I got high voltage. I, I'm the GM over there. As long as uh, Steve quits inviting Pow to it, it's going to keep rolling through. Um, the side note it, how do you feel about high voltage? I don't think we ever really got to sit down and really talk about it too much. No, I, I actually love what high voltage is all about. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you took the reins on it. You know, um, I think it's a great avenue for mm-hmm. the young talent to be seen more. Um, a lot of the young talent that don't really get chances or shots up at the main roster yeah. just yet. Um, chance for them to grow and develop. Yeah. You know, um, I have the gym for it. I have the space for it. Um, I think I'd be stupid not to utilize that space for them. Yeah. You know, um, I feel it's my job to help them grow and, and to help them get as, get to be as good as they can and, and to pull out the best of all of them, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the way to do it. Let them perform. It might not be in front of a crowd or a very small crowd, which is fine. Um, but they're still getting to work in front of a little crowd and and a uh, live camera. So, yeah. you know, experience all the way around. Uh, any experience in this business is good experience. So, Yeah, and I think it's, it's got to be an incredible thing to watch uh, the guys that you helped train, that you helped develop, uh, kind of hone their craft there and bring it over to the main roster. You know, like guys like VJ Price, James Creed, JPH, you know, guys like that. Current oh, yeah. Genesis champion, former SCW heavyweight champion. Um, <clears throat> so it is cool, you know, that I have an opportunity to be part of that. Like I said, I mean, maybe I'm not quite ready to be an SCW president, but I think GM of High Voltage is pretty incredible. Working with the booking committee and the guys like that is uh, absolutely awesome. Um, and taking the time to kind of go out and find new talent, bring new people in and stuff like that. Right. Um, it's something that no other independent company is willing to really do. Um, you know, just have the guys come in, do training. Hey, that's all well and good. You got to have training, but to give right. them a, to give them an ability to, hey, listen, let's work on your uh, your your uh, your mic skills, your wrestling skills, your audience uh, skills, stuff like that. I think yep. it's absolutely incredible opportunity. Something there's a lot to go into it, man. There's a lot, to, you know, as Steve is finding out, there's a lot more to it than just running your fucking mouth. Right. Yeah. Well, just like you say, he, he just he's got to do what he does best, and what he does best is talking. He, now, he does. He's, he's, he can talk great, but the more you talk, 
the more you're gonna piss people off. Is <laughs> this right. you know, that's all I'm gonna say. All right. See, and that's the difference between me and Steve. I, I have been I have been running my mouth for five years and I haven't gotten hurt once. Dude has had an eye issue. He's been hit in the back with a kendo stick. Like, and he sits there, he's like, he's like, you know, like Travis, if you're if you're really SCW, you know, strong and you're you know, you really should be on the front line. It's like, dude, that's what they are there for. That's what the wrestlers are for. Right? That's a hundred pain, JPH, James Reed. I will wear my shirt. John Mulligan. Yeah. He's right I mean, by my side, bro. He's 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 my right hand guy. Him and Creed. Yeah, I well, yeah, we we saw uh, Mulligan was your tag team partner in your opportunity to get your titles back. Yes. And speaking of tag teams, very interesting shirt you're wearing there, bud. I wore it just for you, Travis. Right, right. And you know what? I also wore it for your little buddy, C Red. He's probably cringing <laughs> and having nightmares right about now. Have you have you ever actually had a chance to talk to C Red after that incident, or you guys just kind of go your separate ways for the, No, the uh, if I get within arm's reach of him, I'll probably punch him in the face. So yeah. if, if he probably best just stay away from me. You know, C Red can sit back here on this fucking computer, which you know I'm not mm-hmm. good at, right? Um, getting on here was a struggle beyond anything you can 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 imagine. Um, I don't come on here and talk my mouth, you know, run my mouth and talk all kinds of shit. I could, and I could back it up, but see red quit talking shit. If you want to fight, I know a guy that can set it up for you. It's that simple. If you want to put an end to what's going on, I'll take you and miles on at the same time. It don't fucking matter to me. It don't matter. Now I heard, um, uh, you know, listening to the power hour the past month seems like the Hunter Payne bashing hour. It really does. You know, and I just don't get it. 20, 20 years I've known Red. Yeah. I trained Red. Right? Or should I say I trained Red so hard, and this is a true story, and you can be pissed if you want, Red, but it's true. I worked him so hard on Tuesday nights, he quit. Tuesday nights, went to Thursday and sent his wife on on Tuesdays to train. <coughs> Man, I, you hey, know, I've, I'm just saying. Yeah. That's no, C Red for you. That's yeah. the C Red I know. I've seen, and I've seen you uh, in your training and everything. Uh, and you know what? It's, it's what builds the guys that you have today that are by your side going up against Power Entertainment. You know, it's like you said, it, it's entertainment versus wrestling. Southland Correct. Championship of Wrestling. You know, like you're like yes, in a way, you're you're creating entertainers, but you're creating pro wrestlers first. It's professional wrestlers who entertain people. It's not entertainers who wrestle in a ring. And Correct. there is a huge difference out there. Absolutely. And uh it's just like and like I, I have all the respect in the world to see red and the stuff and everything he has done in the business. I don't take when, anything away from him. He does yeah. get in there, bro. Absolutely. God damn, like a blind man can see he needs to stop running his mouth mm-hmm. because once I put my foot in it, it's over for him. Well, yeah, and that's and that's it's the biggest simple. I mean I mean he he even knows Travis, he could talk all he wants. Yeah. He could be Mr. Tough Guy behind that fucking camera right here, right? Mm-hmm. But the reality is I'll whoop his ass every day of the week and twice on Sunday. So if we have ten matches, I win ten. Yeah, you know it's it's just a cold hard facts. I'm not oh, taking yeah. anything away from them. I give yeah. credit to everyone that steps in the ring. It's not easy. What we do isn't easy. That's true. It's not That's easy, true. right? Yeah, but, man. I, but nine goddamn, year veteran right here, bud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but goddamn, you know, just just no no when to shut your mouth, man. Serious. Yeah. You know, he even made a comment about my wife when all this shit started. I was like, really. Yeah, my wife. Okay, I said we want to go there now. No problem. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. no problem. Well, and it it kind of goes back to this whole big thing. It's like you know, you're a pro, you're a pro wrestler, uh, Hunter. You're the guy that goes out and you wrestle to entertain the crowd. See, Red, I think he's more of an entertainer that just happens to be a professional wrestler. Agreed. So when you throw two people like that in the ring, you know what do you want to overcome with the pro wrestling or the entertainment? 
I mean, see, Red can wear the bright red suits, dance around. I'll and do tell it you fun. what, I brought Red on as my manager, Travis. Mm-hmm. Why? Because see, Red is one of the best managers on the, yeah. on the planet, bar none. But I should have known Damn. that what happened could have happened. But I never saw that happening because I've known Red for 20 freaking years, you know? Mm-hmm. So, whatever. He'll get his new, dude. dude. And in, in due time, whether it's in the middle of this pow shit or when this pow shit's over, Red will at one point in time have to deal with me personally. Now, there's been a lot of speculation when it comes to C. Red about some former group he was a part of called ARC. Have you heard about that coming to SCW or that resurrecting itself with Miles Mercer, Evil Gains, and Evil and all that? Ain't really Karen. ARC? Yeah. Right, uh, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, let him bring let him bring who he wants, man. Because yeah. um, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> uh, once this 320 pound steam engine gets rolling towards C Red, uh, there's no one he can bring in, or not enough people he can bring in to stop me from getting to him. So, yeah. um, you know, let him let him bring in who he wants, Travis. I'm okay with it. Well, Jim. Let me ask you more. Let me ask you a quick question about Windy City here. As we were talking about Terry Allen and uh, kind of the um, the unknown that he has coming uh, from how he's doing his presidency. Um, Sean Mulligan, uh, Lunatic, both former uh, Windy City guys. Can you Lunatic trust is not. Lunatic's not. Lunatic is not. Okay, but Sean Mulligan is. 100%. Can you trust Sean Mulligan? 100%. Yeah. Without so, question. So when it comes down to either Hunter Payne or Terry Allen, you trust Sean Mulligan to choose Hunter Payne and SCW. Oh, uh, look at all the happenings that have gone on so far. Wouldn't yeah. you say? Wouldn't you say that'd be a smart idea to say that? <laughs> I mean, I, I I agree with one hundred percent. I think he'd be I mean, crazy Mulligan, to go against Mulligan was my tag partner. I had nothing to worry about. He had yeah. my back, right? Yeah. He's been down to pow, whipping everyone's ass. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's been having to run out of the building because he's outnumbered. Yeah. But he's whooping ass and taking names, you know, and he's going to do the same thing this coming weekend, along with James Creed going down there. He'll probably come back with uh, one of those title space holding, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell me, tell me a little bit about this Creed Spade title match going on and how, like, how? I mean, was that decided following uh, Arctic Takeover? Well, that's that's how. I'm not really sure. Um, wow. Either way, I am. Okay with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you obviously seen Creed took Spade to his limits. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's going to do just that again. And you never know. If I happen to stop by there unannounced, uh, Creed will probably walk out as champ. Well, Scott Spade did say that he's willing to put his title on the line anytime, anywhere. So... We might see James Creed walk out with two belts. Maybe he become the new SCW heavyweight champion and Pow heavyweight champion. And he'll be the cha- uh, Genesis champ. And he'll Genesis. Be, uh, Creed three belts. Yeah, and I, I believe uh, he also uh, has a rematch uh, for the ARW heavyweight championship against uh, Color. I, I did see that, yes. <clears throat> Dude's going to have more weight in gold than he does in his and whole he, body. And he weighs himself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, get one of those balance skills uh, just to kind of check it out. Hey, I guess that's a good problem to have. That's, hey, you know what? He 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 deserves it. You know, he works crazy. hard, man. He right. works hard. I'll, I'll take nothing from him and, and JPH. Those guys, yeah. bro. You have like, I truly work those guys hard. I run them into mm-hmm. the ground. Yeah, and they get up asking for more all the time. Like I can't do enough to those guys because they want more. They want more, and they want mm-hmm. more. You know, that's awesome to see. Awesome to see. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, like I said, I mean, I, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of the training you have done, uh, especially more at uh, Genesis Martial Arts before you moved into your new facility. Uh, and I've seen who's stayed and who's gone, you know. Um, and you could definitely see who's willing to put in the work and bust their ass, you know. I mean, there's a couple people who came in first day, you know, thinking that this was just going to be something easy to do. And obviously they don't show up on day two. And I'm not going to cater to no one just to get in the state, bro. Exactly. Like, I'm going to work all my guys 
whether they're one year in or they want to come in and work with me and they're 10 years in, they're all going to work mm-hmm. equally as hard. All of them. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about this shirt real quick. This uh, Southland Championship Wrestling shirt. Um, I want to talk about a couple of people who actually have the opportunity to wear a shirt like this. We mentioned Evil Gains and Evil, uh, a rival of yours who uh, sports this shirt, supports Southland Championship Wrestling. But I think the one that surprised me the most is Max Holiday. Now, how did that happen? Because I didn't think you and Holiday could ever really be on the same side. Um, never say never in this business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a, few, a, few, a, few, a few phone conversations, lengthy conversations at that. Mm-hmm. Um, Max Holiday and I are a lot more alike than we, we both thought. That's true. And we both see the poison that is Powell. <clears throat> or should I say the poison that is Jimmy Blaze? We both see that. So it's kind of like, so it's almost like, you know, the enemy and my enemy is my friend kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I guess I mean, it, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with having a former three time longest reigning SCW. I know, he's your boy, Travis. I, I know. know right? When I, when I saw a dude show up at that Apollo show, I saw the video of him taking the jacket off, showing off this shirt, marked out. Marked out. Well, Two hey, things I marked out to in the, the past few is, months. The thing is, the thing is, when that that night, mm-hmm. I did not know truly if Max was going to come out with that shirt on or not. He yeah. had decisions to make, you know, and I was just as shocked as everyone else when he made the decision he made. But I was happy that he did. I'm glad to have him on on Southlands in Southlands Corner. Absolutely, absolutely. And as I was like I was saying, like there's two things that made me mark out huge over the last couple of months when it came to pro wrestling. Uh, Max Holiday displaying the SCW shirt, and uh, the the return of the old Hunter Payne that I've been waiting for. You know, <laughs> the, the guy. And I don't get me wrong. I love Evil Gains and Evil. I think they're a great talent. I've always been a huge fan of uh, John Hudson. But to see what you did in the ring to those two guys in that moment, that's what I've been waiting for for years. Travis, yeah. you know there's a lot more where that came from. I'm excited to see it. Now I don't want you. <laughs> no. give, I don't want you. Give, I don't want you giving Tom matches away to people anymore. So stay away from wrestling SCW guys. Because I almost, because he almost took my breath away when he gave away I'm that. Still, I, like, I oh. still don't, I still don't regret that decision. Um, no matter how other people yeah. on other shows want to twist it, I feel I did the right <clears throat> thing for my guys. You know, oh, I would do 100%. the same for any of those guys. If there's 100%. a guaranteed title shot at Powell, um, I'll gladly go win that guaranteed shot, and I'll gladly give it over to to one of my guys. I have no problem with that. Yeah, and you know, and and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's the thing. Like that's why I wanted to get your your side of it, because it's hopefully just awesome. you can respect that, and hopefully you think it was an honorable thing to do, because I truly 100%. do. I, I I getting getting the reasoning, I totally understand 100. percent In in the moment, you don't get it. no, yeah, because in the moment it just felt like, like I said, either you didn't want to kill him and you're just gonna call it, or you couldn't do it. That was the thing. That that had nothing was to do with me not killing him. I could have oh, killed okay. him. But, you, they definitely you know, could. When a guy takes that big of a beating, Travis, mm-hmm. I mean, even as that match is going on, you're just in your head, you're like, man, this fucking kid, all 170 pounds of them just yeah. won't quit. Gotcha. Just won't hey, quit. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to get just on a personal note from that match, obviously you, you and Creep know each other for a few years. You had an opportunity to meet his family. I and did. we know that his family's at ringside every match that he has. Was there an uneasiness to what you were doing in the ring, no. knowing that his mom and dad are right there? Not at all. It's all no. business, man. Yeah, right? Yeah. When when you're in that ring fighting one of your best friends yeah. or your biggest enemy, it doesn't matter. It, it, in, in them ropes, it's all business, bro. Gotcha. You got to do what you got to do. Now I, I think I remember. I think I remember there was a moment where we looked at them and apologized. I think I did see something along the lines of that happening. No, there was no apology. I think okay. I said some along. I'm sorry for what I'm about to 
half yeah. to, you, to your son. Something like that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and that's right. That's that is the answer I'm looking for. That is the hundred pain that I want to see. I want the hundred pain that I, I can't remember. I think it was Angel that you power bombed uh, years ago. Correct. That's the hundred pain that I need. That's the hundred pain that SCW needs going into a, a war with Pop. Like yeah. You gotta get rid of the uh, the slap in the hands of the fans because you know they 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 uh, you know they they just want to bring you your energy. Like I don't want that bullshit red and yellow Hulk Hogan hunter pain. Like you just leave that leave that <laughs> off to the side. You get that big evil Undertaker from two thousand three. That's the guy that you need. Well, that that that's the guy that's leading the charge. Right, right. The guy who's wearing that shirt right now. That's the guy no, I need. No, you did make reference to this shirt. I did. Right. And I've been, I have this knack Mm -hmm. of pulling guys out of so-called retirement, right? And this guy right here, the other half of this team, he's legit my Mm brother-in-law, right? He's family. If I have to call him because I can't trust other people, yeah. Uh, I have to call him because shit's just getting a little hairy. I feel sorry for whoever he has to come out of retirement for <laughs> because that dude does not want to get off the couch if he doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the last time he was in SCW was when you guys teamed up to take on, I think it was the K. The plague. Remember, the plague. Plague. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I don't, I think the last time I saw you guys face or team up together had to win back in Elite Pro in like 2007, 2008. I didn't get a chance to see you guys take on Plague. Um, I've okay. had a chance. I've had a chance to talk to Austin um, on one of our roundtables a couple years ago, and I know he has a history with my cousin um, going back to. Um, oh, I can't remember what the uh, company was now. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Another company. Uh, Dreamwave. Um, Dreamwave. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, so foreshadowing, potentially, we could see a return of uh, of uh, Abaddon, Abaddon. Never, you never say never, Travis. Right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, be, I'll never tell you yes or no, but know <laughs> that he's family and know that family always got each other's back. So yeah. if if I truly need him, there's no doubt in my mind he'll be there. He's been there for me in the past, and I, mm-hmm. I don't doubt he ain't, he wouldn't be there again. So, Have you had a chance to talk to him about this whole pal situation? I have not had a chance to talk yeah. to him yet, no. Yeah. yeah, you're just waiting for that, like, that one phone call thing. It's almost like a burner phone, like, hey, if you need me, here's a dial at once kind of thing. You're just yeah, waiting for that much. one moment. Cool. <laughs> I, think he went, I think when he sees it ring, he wants to smash it with a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. ah! <laughs> gotcha all right uh next show is the next scw show planned it is cool and when is that happening what's happening well when is it it is the 20 god uh call, call me out here whatever to say 26 27th 26th february yeah. 26th okay yeah. shabance yes sir awesome <clears throat> has there been any speculation on what the plan is now for what's going into February 26th? Has Terry discussed anything? I don't know how, how really involved. Well, I, do know, I do know there is going to be a return match. Okay. Um, I don't know the rules or the stipulations yet, but it will be dysfunction once again taking on evil gains and evil. Gotcha. Have you had a chance to watch that dysfunction team? You know what? Um, when I, I think they could very well be your next SCW tag team champions. When I saw when I saw they were showing up at SCW, I went ahead and looked up online who they were. Loved it. I I, I love I love the growth of the tag team division because I know that was something that. SCW really wanted to build on that and the win for game. years with it, man. Honestly, it's so hard to get good tag teams in Travis. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I believe it a hundred percent. Um, uh, I think, I think right now, uh, I think tag division is doing pretty well. You, you and Anthony, uh, kind of held it together for so long. Um, obviously now you have different 
priorities going into my, my uh, focus versus... is how um, I'm not yeah. worried about the tag titles at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm not a title driven person at this point. Yeah. Um, other people may be, that's okay. Um, my focus is Southland to make sure Southland thrives, make sure Southland's yeah. going strong and I'll do everything I can for the SCW nation. So, um, regardless of what, you know, those other two clowns think. Um, and I think you've said yourself earlier, you've seen me at the forefront of everything from the beginning. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm kind of a hard guy to miss when I'm in the building, you see me. Yeah. You're not, you're not a backseat guy. And that's the thing I don't understand no. when people are getting that no. idea. <clears throat> um, but Hunter, you know, I want, I want to do something fun here. If you're willing to have some fun with me at the, uh, as we kind of wrap this up here. Um, huge fan of your promos. I like the way you talk and you say things about people. If I throw some names at you, would you mind cutting promos on them? Maybe <laughs> give, maybe giving a final thought and your opinion on them and stuff. Maybe not. Maybe not cut a promo, but I'll give you a thought. Yeah, on. Give me, yeah, give me a final thought. You know, give me a word and give me a description of how you feel about them at this moment. Okay. Go and for they're it. easy people. Let's go with C Red first. Who? Yeah, C Red. Next. Okay. Uh about Steve. Steve Arndt. Steve Arndt? Arndt, yeah. Steve Arndt. Steve, all the potential in the world. Um, best commentator, probably best ring announcer in the Indies. <coughs> Just doesn't know when to close his yapper sometimes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Hey, how do you feel about uh about them uh talking yesterday on the power hour? About maybe it's time to put old Yeller uh, out to pasture. Yeah, they've been saying that for years, man. Like, damn. Like when they when 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 people have nothing else to say about me, Travis. I mean, obviously, I'm 48, still in pretty damn good shape. Yeah, I can still move a bus, right? The only fucking thing people have is <laughs> he's old. Yeah. Well, come and fucking ring and find out how old I am. That's true. You know. That's true. I took it, ring, man. I took a shoulder tackle from you, and I nearly died. <laughs> because because my dumb ass is like, oh, it's like riding a bicycle. Hey, shoulder tackle me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Not, if I'm not mistaken, we did ace bandage an ice pack around your shoulder when you left that night. <laughs> I think I crawled out of the ring. It was brutal. <laughs> I think I took an overhand. I think I took an overhand chop from you too. Too. Oh man. Oh, I was wondering why I had lung problems going on. <laughs> had nothing to do with the cigarettes. No, no, nothing whatsoever. <laughs> that fucking bear claw that you came at me with. Oh shit. Um, how about um. How about Terry Allen? What uh, what can we say about Terry Allen? Um, Terry Allen, yeah. I've known Terry since day one in his business. Um, at one point in time, one of my best friends, and one of the most mysterious men, probably in this business today. And 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 that'll never change. He'll always be that way. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, as time goes on, people. You know, they have their lives to live. So, you, you know, he's over here. I'm over here. We lose touch for a while. And that happens. But we reconnected. And um, he just he's been a different guy. I just can't figure him out, man. I uh, wish for the life of me I knew where he was going or what was in his mind. But he, he truly doesn't let you in. So. Yeah. What about Natasha Crane, new uh, SCW Women's Champion? Couldn't be more proud of her. Right. Um, she's She's earned it. Right. Um, I hate uh, I hate the term deserve. She earned. Earned, yeah. Right. Um, she works her ass off at training every week. Um, no one sees sometimes the struggle she goes through uh, mm -hmm. mentally, physically and everything else. Um, I hope she has a long run, man. I can't wait to see what she has in store for the nation. Yeah. Uh, chic. How about Sheik uh, with his issues with Bain X? Um, very disappointed in the Sheik. Yeah. Um, let's just say 
Sheik, I hope you are never staring at the <coughs> ring and seeing me on the other end. Maybe your last match in SCW, if that's the case. It, it, it's amazing what, uh, you know, like you, you thought that, you know, when people would turn a corner, have an opportunity to come to find out he was just using Bay next to get what he wanted. Yeah, that, that irks me a little bit. Yeah. Um, no room for shit like that, you know. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure Bain X will, will handle his own. He'll take care of what he needs to take care of. And he still does have Natasha Crane uh, in his corner. So that's true. I ain't worried about it. Um, let's go with JPH. Uh, we haven't seen him in a while, uh, but uh, how, what do you got to say about JPH? Um, future AEW or WWE superstar. Uh, the kid is that good. Yeah. Um, I'm begging him to hit the weights a little more to get to get more size. I think that's mm-hmm. what he's lacking. Um, but he has everything else, man. He has everything else. Uh, for him not to be, or at least get an opportunity yeah. for one of the bigger companies, I think is a crime. Yeah, well, especially with uh, you know that that match he had with Marche uh, Rocket a few months back was phenomenal. I mean, like we we did see them in the ring with Brian Cage. Uh, it was a 2020, I believe that one happened. Yeah. Um, and you know, like JPH, you know, he held it. You know, he held. He, he held his he own. Kept he was nervous as hell going in there with yeah. those two guys. Man, I ain't gonna lie. Oh. He had many conversations with me leading into that match. He was super nervous. Mm-hmm. And I told him at the end of the day, bro, go out there and do your thing. Get your yeah. shit in, as Brian Cage would say, right? Yeah. Um, and he did. He did his thing, man. He he said as soon as he got out there and got hit, he was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm here. <clears throat> now, you, uh, I mean, the first the first time I saw JPH, he was just Jay Harris, one half of uh, the uh, Rulers of Wrestling. Uh, you were in that tournament with uh, with that tag team. Like, right. looking back at that, like, did you ever think that this guy was one day going to be SCW Heavyweight Champion? Um, if you would have asked me back then, no. Yeah, back then, yeah. I would have never said it, it wasn't there. It just wasn't there. I mean, th- he spent so much time honing his craft as a single wrestler, getting himself in even better shape than he was before. He like, worked hard, he, man. He busts his ass. Uh, he worked hard. Uh, another guy who busts his ass, uh, James Creed. What do we, we, we got to say about Creed? Uh, I got a lot of the same thing to say about Creed. Super talented. Yeah. Um, I think, you know... I take 2020 as like a lost year. That uh, I think that was the first COVID year, right? Yeah. Um, it's kind of a lost year. I think we only ran like uh, three or four shows that year. We kind of mm-hmm. snuck them in when mandates kind of went down, numbers were going down. Um, mm-hmm. So we snuck a few shows in here, a show in here or there. Um, we lost our gym that year at Genesis, um, picked up another gym. Uh, Later that year in like October, November. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, it's kind of a lot sure. So I'll tell you, he's probably like two and a half, three years in only. Um, but look at where he is at in that short of time. Yeah, that's how determined he is. That's how much of a sponge that kid is. You can't give him enough advice. You can't give him enough training. He wants to be there. He's there. He is there every time the doors are open. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't say enough good things about the kid. He's he's super talented, man. He's I think it's a good and you know what? Give him two more years. He'll be he'll be getting those shots uh for AW. You know, WWE, I don't know, that's just another beast to me. Um yeah. I think it's there's a lot of politics that go on with WWE or whatever. I could be wrong, but uh it is what it is. I kind of focus on on my own. I don't worry about too much of what's going on outside my four walls. Yeah. so to speak, but it's a crying shame if those guys don't make it. It really is. They're, they're mm-hmm. both, both super talented, man. Gotcha. All right, biggest one of all of them, uh, Jimmy Blaze. What you, uh, final thoughts on Jimmy Blaze? Jimmy Blaze? Uh, puppet master, right? Yeah. Uh, he sent one of his henchmen down to uh, secretly, single-handedly take out Southland uh, one guy at a time, but I kind of caught on to that. I uh, didn't let Scott know that and decided to take matters into my own hands. Um, mm-hmm. So to me, he's, he's a, he's a slimy piece of shit. 
Um, not a big fan of Jimmy Blaze. Um, that's why this feud will never end. Like, if I would have gotten my hands on him the other night, Travis, yeah. it wouldn't have ended. I want a match with Jimmy Blaze. A match. Whether it's at POW, whether it's at Southland, or whether it's in an alley. I don't care. Well, those are my thoughts on Jimmy. Um, not a big fan. Yeah. Uh, uh, can't be trusted. You know? Um, he's not going to be used by, by surprised by anything I say here. So, mm. uh, he's a piece of shit, man. Um, he, he, know, he knows that. He knows he is. Yeah. You know? And you've seen it. I'm sure you may or may not have conversations with the guy over the years. You've been around a while, around the business a while. Um, but Jimmy, look at right here. Man to man, when is it going to happen? Uh, you want it to happen at POW? I'll come by myself. All I want is you, Jim. As soon as that happens, all this shit will stop. Until then, it's never going to stop. Hunter Payne, not only uh, a legend in Southland Championship Wrestling across the Midwest itself, but also a trainer at Southland Championship Wrestling School. Now, if you guys out there, you're looking to become part of the wrestling business, whether it be a wrestler, a valet, a referee, and you want to know where you could go, all you got to do is check out Southland Championship Wrestling on Facebook, throw them a message, let them know, hey, I'm interested, they'll get you the information you need to get into the business and start training to be the next top person in wrestling. Um, next show, February 26th in Shabantz. Uh Card will come up as we go through, obviously. We'll keep them updated here on this show as well. Uh, anything else you want to add, Hunter, while we're here before we say uh, goodbye and everything? Oh, Travis, we've actually had a decent conversation today, huh? I know, yeah, right? You only, you only had one dig at me. I'm proud of you. You know, and of course it goes to the old jokes. You know, like I said, when nobody has anything else, it's the old jokes, right? <laughs> uh, son, well, what else am I gonna say, man? You haven't done anything yet to uh, <laughs> for me to joke about, you know? No, <laughs> but, you know, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to keep it professional. I wanted to keep it, uh, keep it, uh, you know, respectable here. And uh, yeah, you haven't mentioned chicken wings once, so I guess we're uh, we're in good shape. Hear that? No, but but I do want to give a shout out yeah. to a group of people before we go off the air. 100%. Go for it. Right. And that's the Southland Nation, SCW Nation at the Shabant Civic Center. Have you seen the footage? Which one? Uh, you know. I've seen a lot of footage. That, seeing that Powell did not want to get in the ring with Southland. Yeah. Last Saturday night. I asked the nation to kindly mm -hmm. circle these Powell clowns and escort, escort them out of the building. And you know what? They did. Yeah, they, took so out, good. they took out. They took out the trash. <laughs> they. I can't, think, I can't thank them enough for that. They were so excited to do it that super fans, uh, Patrick and Kayla, were on the other side of the building, and got in front before everyone else to <laughs> escort them out. <laughs> the the power of the Southland Nation is strong. It's a it's a it's a feeling that will radiate through you when you're at these shows. I, loud, I, I'll excited. put my fans. I'll put my fans um, at Southland amongst the best, right? In the mm -hmm. on the independent scene, they're they're phenomenal, man. They oh, yeah. through thick and thin, through good times, through bad, right? Yeah. But one thing's for sure, they're crazy, <laughs> and they have our back. No matter what. <laughs> oh yeah, and well, like, even when even when you have uh, wrestlers who have made a name of themselves, and, like like uh, James Creed, JPH, when they go to other companies to wrestle, there's still there's there's no doubt that at one point you're going to hear an SCW chant. Yeah, it's going to happen. We've heard yes. it. In, it we've, heard it in, we've heard it in ARW. It's happened at POW. It happened <laughs> at DWA. Like it happens everywhere else. SCW <laughs> will be chanted in other venues of other wrestling companies. It's just a fact. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, my, my, I, 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 I I'll tell anyone, man, the, the Southland fans, they're not Fairweather fans, bro. They are with us, dude. They are, 
They're awesome. They're crazy. They're they're alive. You know what I mean? <laughs> you go in that gym, man, and, and they react to everything you do. They love what we do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> tell you what, man. Al just needs to watch their back going forward. They need to be careful what they're saying to these people because <laughs> I can't be out there all the yeah. time watching them. Oh, 100%. And that's another thing. That someday you guys do that not many people do is your shows are available on pay-per-view for those who can't make it to the shows. Yes, they are. You know, so, um, I mean, like, fun. I know, you know, during these times of COVID, um, there's people with um, health issues that can't make it out to the, to the shows, and I understand yeah. that. Um, I am mad at no one for not coming to the show. I, I get it. You know, COVID is a real thing. I, I've had to deal with it myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I just sat down with the powers to be and we tried to figure out a way to, to bring it to people that can't make it to the venue or just are just too nervous or uh, scared yet yeah. to come to the venue. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, just wanted to give them the opportunity to still check out the shows. <clears throat> Absolutely. Plus, you got nachos. I mean, really, SCW is doing everything perfect. <laughs> you know, we're we're working on the chicken wings, Trav. We're working on the chicken wings. Right. I'm just I'm just waiting, <laughs> but they gotta be legit wings. If you try passing off those boneless bullshit nuggets, it ain't the same. <laughs> but no, make sure you guys get out. You check out Southland Championship show if you haven't yet. You need to be there live to feel every aspect of the show happening. Uh, like I said, if you're looking to get into the business, message Southland Championship Wrestling on Facebook and let them know. They'll get you the information you need. Uh, make sure you follow me on Facebook at Facebook, and Instagram, and uh, Twitter at Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW Podcast. Our shows do get dropped wherever podcasts are available. You can check them out anywhere. Um, and you can see amazing opportunities like I have here with Hunter Payne as we sit down and we talk. We've been doing a lot of independent stuff lately, so this is uh, it's a pleasure. I, will, I won't lie. I'm not going to kiss your ass about it, but it's been a pleasure to sit down and talk with you. Uh, we haven't no. really been... You know, next time we do a sit down, we can talk more in depth about other things. But um, this whole Paul situation, I felt <laughs> uh, needed to be addressed. And yeah. you know, the other guy wanted me on, but why would I go on there when the guy doesn't even like me? That's true. You know, he just he you know? all he wants is the views, man. I you just know, want so hundred pain. I said, let me call my boy Travis and see if he wants to do a little something before I uh, <clears throat> commit to doing that. Yeah, and that's the thing he just, too. He man. was a little shocked and a little stunned. But here we are. Right. Well, and that's the thing, too, that people need to realize is, like, you can't sit there and take the take the facts from one person. You have to get both sides of the story. So right. when you have a show like The Power Hour who brings Pow in to get their side of it, or you get Just See Red's side of it, or Just Steve's. Have you seen anyone from Southland on The Power Hour yet? You know, the only people I've seen from Southland is uh, is Evil Gains and Evil. And even then, he seems like his only guests are people who just don't like Hunter Payne. <laughs> and, and C. Red, right? He's and C. Red. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah that's it. Figure. You right? know, you, you couldn't get three more bigger Hunter Payne haters than those three clowns, man. <laughs> right. And here, uh, here you are on JFW. Even though, even though we mock each other, we're still here able to sit down and get your side of the story. And that's all we're trying to do here. Well, hopefully, hopefully I opened up your eyes a little bit. Um, hopefully people don't believe the bullshit being spewed um, by the other two guys. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you go back and watch the tape, when C-Red got jumped, I was the first one to jump out of the ring to help him. Um, mm -hmm. I think I call that convenient amnesia that C-Red has, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and Steve... Like I said, all is fear and love and war. When you run your mouth and start a war, sometimes you're caught by yourself. And when you get caught by yourself, sometimes you need to man up. And nothing wrong with a little tough love. Nothing wrong with doing what you do. Just quit crying and bitching about it and do your fucking job. That's true. Or do what I do and stay behind the camera. Haven't Either you got way, hurt right? yet? Right? Right? Haven't taken a body slam since 2008. You got a kendo stick mark across your back? No, no, because I stay behind cameras and trainers. I, I Jimmy Blaze yet? Not once. <laughs> Not once. But, you know, he keeps on talking to, to his credit, yeah. you know. I, I guess he's a man's man. He ain't afraid of anyone. But 
You know, just know when you talk that much, there's not always going to be someone that has your back. It's what's, impossible. We all have other things going on. What's that old expression? Talk shit, get hit? Yeah, pretty much. Right? It's simple. <laughs> right. Hunter, thank you again for sitting with me. I do appreciate it. Um, guys, that's all I got. So, as always, I am Travis D. And thank you for listening to another episode of Just Freaking Wrestling, the JFW Podcast.